TYT Sports, what an impressive run it has been for Florida Gulf Coast University. Yeah, the favorites in March Madness all of a sudden. Still not really. Uh, we have Adam Fisher of the Naples Daily News. Firstly, they beat Georgetown, just the seventh 15 seed to do so. And then after that, I had a very good feeling that they would beat a San Diego State team that, in my opinion, overachieved this year. They took care of business against Jamal Franklin and the Aztecs, the first 15 seed to reach the Sweet 16. It's an unprecedented run because they've only been eligible for the tournament for two years. Where exactly did these players come from? I know Sherwood, uh, Sherwood Brown was a, a, uh, a walk-on. He's a senior now. And mm -hmm. a lot of these players just hit their growth. I mean, Feeler was a point guard in high school, and now he's six foot seven. Wh where did these guys come from? Well, it's interesting to look at them, and it starts with their coach. Andy Enfield, his background is player development. He worked for, as a shooting coach for the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, did some consulting and player development is kind of a generic term, but whatever he's doing, it's working. You know, he's got Brett Comer, uh, one of the best point guards in the tournament right now, and he was just an average kid coming out of high school. He did play with Austin Rivers in high school, so that yeah. really helps your point guard numbers. Mm -hmm. But um, Sh Sherwin Brown, no one else recruited him. He said uh, this past week, I came to FGCU because I had no other chance or no other places. Um, so Enfield's good at that. Enfield's good at selling his school, selling his system, which has brought in some transfers. Eric McKnight, who threw down that ridiculous one-handed reach-back tomahawk jam <laughs> against San Diego State. He's a kid that didn't see any playing time at Iowa State. Transfers down here, he's turned into a beast. So uh, they've really come on strong. And you mentioned the losses. Not only did it take time for these guys to gel, but you see them play, they're having fun. They got nothing to lose. These guys are just regular Joes until five days ago. You know, you see them in the gym. Like I said, they got the outdoor courts. They walk around. And, you know, it's been kind of amazing for them. They try and go get lunch, and people are coming up to them, shaking their hand, and <laughs> talking to them about the tournament. I mean, they're loving it. But as far as I can tell, they're keeping level heads. They're, they're, they're laid back guys, and that's really going to help them out. You were talking about Coach Einfield. I want to get back to him. He was an assistant at Florida State. He has his own company. Um, obviously, he's not the CEO of that company. It's called Track Manager, which is a software, co software contract management company in healthcare, which is valued at over $100 million. He has the model wife that we all know very, very well now. Uh, basketball consulting business, which, as you said, is in skills development. You know, he's an entrepreneur. He was hired at March 31st of 2011. Uh, he, at Johns Hopkins, he scored over 2,000 points. I mean, is there a more intriguing story and a more lovable story, not just with FGCU, but with, with Coach Einfield, Adam? No, no. Every, everybody's eating up uh, this infield story. You know, everybody's got, calling him the most interesting man in the world. Everything he touches turns to gold. Every part of his life he's had success in. You think he'd be, you know, the, this mega star that did keeps his nose in the air. He's the most laid back guy until until they got to Philadelphia. He was still answering his calls from me, from the local media. I'm some Joe Schmo at, at Naples Daily News and I call him direct on his cell phone, he answers the first ring. So laid back guy, always smiling as you can see, just loving it. He's appreciative of what he has, but he's also earned it. Sweet sixteen, Cowboys Stadium against the University of Florida. I know that people were saying, oh, it's an interstate rival. I mean, like, when have they played before? Yeah. I, don't, I don't honestly know. Have they played before, by the way, Adam? I don't think they, they have. They played, uh, and I didn't know this either, they played in the 2008-2009 season, and Florida beat them by 34 points. Okay, so I guess that could leave a sour taste in some people's mouths. But I mean, it's, it's not, it, it, this isn't a fantastic rivalry. It's a fantastic game. And the fact that this 15 seed coming out of nowhere, it seems like, you know, grabs people's attention. They get the crowd involved. They're, you know, they're, they're having so much fun on the court. They play with this, this attractive swagger that people just eat up. What, how, I mean, like, look, let, let's get down to it. Do you like their chances against Florida? This is a very good team. They have the coach. They have the players. They're very disciplined. Do you like their chances against the Gators? I do like their chances. I'm not saying they're going to win, but I do like their chances because they're going to be even more hyped up, FGCU is, because this is their chance to make a name for themselves. You know, the, the country all knows them now, but no one in Florida knew about them two weeks ago. And Florida, obviously, with the two national championships, um, as far as basketball goals, they're, they're the, uh, you know, the watermark that yeah. you want to meet. And this is their chance to put a stamp on it. They've already beaten Miami. That was big for them, but Miami is not a huge basketball power like Florida is. So these kids are going to be hyped up, especially, you know, Brett Comer, 
Sherwood Brown, two kids that are from the Orlando area, not too far from Gainesville, that were overlooked by the Gators. I mean, mm-hmm. heck, all these guys were overlooked by the Gators. So they're going to be uh, they're going to be hyped up. Although I think it will kind of fire up the Gators more because they're they're not the talk of the story. They're the what number three seed, yep. and they, they're dreaming of the Final Four, and no one's talking about them. They're talking about this tiny other state school down uh, 300 miles away. So I think the Gators are going to come out fired up as well. I'm really looking forward to a good matchup. A lot of people are critical of FGCU, you know, not not necessarily the way they play, but their antics on the court, their antics Mm -hmm. on the bench, you know, the chicken dance, Uh, Sherwood Brown with his tongue out, you know, going to the fans, them celebrating instead of shaking San Diego State's hands. What do you make of all of them uh, being so critical of the Eagles? Well, I get it. I see how from an outsider perspective, um, it looks a little cocky, you know, it looks like they're rubbing it in the face, but as you said, this isn't the Heat, this isn't the Yankees, this isn't even Georgetown or Florida that, that's, you know, rubbing it in the face of a lesser opponent. This is a group of kids that just came in and did the impossible, and they're having fun. I feel like everything they do, none of it is, um, you know, derogatory. It's not aimed at showing up an opponent. It's just these kids celebrating the biggest thing that's ever happened to them. So, yeah, I think people should chill out a little bit and just see it for what it is. It's not meant as a mean thing. It's not meant to, to look like jerks. It's just having fun. And that's how they play. That's how they've won. Um, and that's how they're going to keep winning if they do.